There we go. We're back. All right. All right. Cool. So uh, we're going to take a look at Sinker. And uh, for the second time on the GGDA streaming, uh, we do have um, a mobile game. The first time we got to take a look at a first look at Paladin Strike. But last year, uh, we got to take a look at Sinker in a first look as it was being released on Steam. Um, Robert, you with us? Yep, I'm right here. All right. Everybody else, you guys with us too? Andrew and... Yes. Uh, all right, yeah, and, and Joe. Joe is uh, at the Game Dev Hangout in Atlanta right now, so everything's kind of fun and party time over there. But anyways, uh, Robert, you want to tell us a little bit about um, how did you come up with Sinker and you know, uh, compare, how long did it take you to get into the mobile side? Yeah, sure. So um, I spent about six months on the game, you know, doing it up for Steam, mostly the PC release, but I always had in mind that mobile, you know, would be a really good fit for touch and mobile. So, I, but I did wait until after the Steam release and, you know, got some feedback from the Steam folks and tuned it up a little bit. And then I did the mobile port and that took about a month. It wasn't too, too bad. Well, there we get to see the awesome WD design for your water, uh, for your company. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, um, where you started out making games and uh, what transitioned into uh, where you are now? Sure, yeah, you know, my day job is an enterprise contractor, you know, doing backends of websites and things like that. But about five years ago, I decided that, you know, as a lifelong video gamer, that I really wanted to try my hand at it, see what I could come up with. So, so I've been working in Unity for about five years now. And this is my first solo effort game. And, uh, you know, kind of chose the scope to, to meet my capabilities, you know, pretty uh, minimal. And uh, happy to hear what you guys think about it. All right. Well, I do remember getting to play this a little bit uh, back in the day when it came out on Steam. But as you see right now, I've uh, this is from my mobile phone. So um, actually, you know, of course, we're in um, portrait mode right now. But uh, to help fill up the screen, there we go. Interesting approach here. So uh, when I contacted you earlier when I was testing this, I noticed that Sinker was laying on, uh, laying on the side, and the buttons didn't move either, did it? Whoa, something like Ivan. <laughs> Let's try it this way. <laughs> there we go. Now they look right. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, your Sinker logo, you decided to put it on the left-hand side for uh, landscape mode? Yeah, that's how it uh, was developed for desktop, you know, landscape for desktop. And then I wanted to make sure that I used an available screen, you know, in the portrait mode pretty well, too. So I just I flipped, just flipped the logo. Well, that's not right. Oh, there it goes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it still looks good. It's an interesting, interesting approach uh, when trying to transition to mobile side of things. Um, what? Well, you know, the reason I did that um, is because the game, I didn't want to change the aspect ratio of the design levels. So I just, when I, when I detect that the game has been rotated, I rotate the camera, basically. Um, All right, very cool. Uh, I'm going to start playing. Uh, anybody else in, uh, within our Discord chat here, you got any questions or want to talk about it, um, feel free to pipe in. In the meantime, yeah. I'm going to start playing. Yeah. Is the mobile the full game that was on Steam, or is it uh, more levels or less levels? Hey, Joe, it's the same game, just a little bit tuned up, and I'm going to push those updates to Steam. There's a lot of controller logic that's been you know, uh, beefed up because of the release on Android TV and Apple TV, but the game logic, you know, the puzzles themselves, they're all the same. Uh-huh. All right. Well, hey, uh, Joe, He's. I'm, I'm sure you're a big fan of this game, too, because uh, you got puzzles by Joe. That's who we're talking to in the background. Um, anyways. I was the first I was the first reviewer after telling him I wouldn't review his game. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Joe. Thank you again. Yeah, he, his, this game was so awesome, I changed my mind. <laughs> well, and I don't do that often. Those tuning in and watching the gameplay uh, before I like start diving into playing, obviously uh, there's not a, really a tutorial here. He stuck with that and like it's pretty giving you a good clear sign on what you need to do. Uh, really easy to learn. Now, I am starting from one. Uh, I, I had to reinstall it just a little while ago, so but I, I don't mind playing all. I can't remember what my highest level was. Anyways, uh, Andrew, any got any questions or comments or complaints? 
Yeah, Robert, you already raised some interesting points. Let's unpack some of the things you had to do to get this on uh, fire and uh, uh, TV and so on. Sure, yeah. We're watching, uh, this is, uh, you know, Robert? Sorry. So what, what was involved with that? Um, the, the main thing to get the, the game on the fire from Unity was to make sure that you support a, a controller and specifically supporting the handheld controller, which is basically just a D-pad with a couple buttons on it. All right. So uh, what possessed you to go ahead and go to all these new platforms? That's a whole lot to start supporting. Yeah, it is. But the, the truth of the matter is I was hoping to get noticed by Apple and by Google by supporting their platforms that are not as popular. You know, Android TV is not nearly as popular as their handheld operating system. And same thing with Apple, their TV. That's Robert now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe we need to mute the party for a little bit. Yeah, working on it. All right. <laughs> Big launch party for Robert here. All right, so yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, no, hey party. Uh and uh and you're going to hear him shout in about 30 seconds. Hey party. Uh give Robert a big shout out. All right. Countdown. The delay between real time and right. when somebody else So it. let's talk a little bit about uh, the audiences for these. Because you're definitely trying to hit a, a more casual audience with the uh, sinker ones even then on the uh, mobile, and certainly a more casual audience than on Steam. What do you think of the people who are going to pick you up on these? Do you think they'll be different from the folks who played you on Steam, or kind of the same? Oh, I think that's the same type of person, the, the same type of gamer that likes the game on Steam will like it on mobile. Uh, you, know, you know, puzzle players, obviously. Um, yeah, it's and people that don't want to, to actually have to worry about you know, reaction times and things like that. They just want to sit down and have a contemplative kind of game session. So I think, but, but the game really had you know mobile written all over it from the beginning. And there's there can be pushback on Steam from you know if it's too mobile. So I wanted to make sure that it kind of went to the Steam audience as well as mobile. Do you think you're losing some of that audience by not having a lot of sound effects in here, like when you move and drop things? Oh, there's sound well, effects. Well, yeah, we can't hear that sound, but I believe. But okay. yes, there's there's a there's a background soundtrack, and then yeah. every action that you take in the game, there's a piano tone or several tones that mark those events. Can you guys hear it now? Uh, uh, in the stream, it'll take a few minutes. Can you hear it uh, on your speakers? Looking forward to hearing it. Um, <laughs> uh, Gary, no. the streamers can hear it. Excellent. So okay. that is the music. And by the way, um, we're all big fans of you know outer space stuff. And so uh, on the same music note, um, when when uh, we launched the, the Tesla, or when <laughs> Elon launched that Tesla into outer space, when you were watching the live webcam this is one of the soundtracks that was playing in the background watching the tesla float in space with earth in the background anyway uh, that's awesome yeah <laughs> so talk? so I'll, I'll plug it it's a, a kevin mcleod soundtrack called uh, music for manatees i really like it excellent excellent so i'm actually going to turn the music back down a little bit because it is a little too distracting over uh talking to you guys so but i'll leave the um sound effects up so you went Android, Android TV, iOS, TV, iOS, Fire Tablets, and TV, all in the same day. How did it go? <laughs> you know, believe it or not, the, the, the biggest problem was I didn't realize what a lag Apple has on getting um, a title published. I was, you know, I got up at 6 a.m. this morning and I pressed the launch button. And then I got this big message saying I needed to fill out all my legal paperwork and it could take 24 hours. So that was a little bit of a panic. Um, uh, yeah. So, so, but, you know, that was the only hitch I had. Um, I, I've been playing this for weeks. I've had, you know, the, the Google beta up for weeks. And, you know, I thought all I had to do was in the morning wake up and press a few buttons and then send out some emails and do some tweeting. 
Um, but so I, I'm happy things are going well. Now, clearly, it's not easy to get real time sales reports from any of these. But uh, are, are you seeing much feedback already? No, you know, I'm surprised that there isn't a lot of uh, feedback. You know, on Steam, I'm used to being able to give him hourly sales reports and, you know, people in the community forums will be posting pretty regularly. But on uh, mobile, I've got no feedback at all. I have to wait till tomorrow to kind of get some uh, yep. numbers back. Right, all sales, no, uh, sales reports take at least 24 hours to get to the developer. Uh, and the forums are not nearly as active. The, that is the difference on a less hardcore audience is they're less hardcore about posting in forums too. Yeah, so I think that Steam was probably the right choice for me to go first because the community involvement there let me tune it up. You know, I got an earful of all the things that needed to be changed. So hopefully, you know, that was, that was the right call. Excellent, excellent. Now you do have a lot of uh, play in there um, for people. I mean, it's a lot deeper game than most casual gamers will be looking for. You uh, think you'll have an issue with mobile players being hitting a level that they can't get past, or do you think that they're going to enjoy pushing on past it? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I get feedback both ways. Some people say it's too easy, and some people say it's way too hard to get stuck. There's these, uh, you know, pain points, and I think you just can't build a game that absolutely everybody's going to like. And I hope uh, enough people like it that I'll, you know, be happy about it. Yeah, if nobody hates it, nobody's going to like it either. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's my role. I heard, hopefully you heard that Joe in the background saying that. Yeah, yeah Joe in the background was saying that if anybody likes it, you've done something wrong. <laughs> oh, wait, is that not what you said, Joe? <laughs> Excellent. Let's do something. So, the artwork, you've been very proud of the, the minimalist approach, and it works very well for it. Is that something you've gotten any feedback on? I mean, certainly when you're looking at this on a TV screen, that's a whole lot of real estate with uh, for this approach. Yeah, but you know, the the, uh, the approach is vector-based, so it scales smoothly up to 4K and beyond. So, really? you know, what you see on your phone, you'll see on your TV, it'll look the same. Oh, that's excellent. Well, all right, so I'm, uh, I wish I could kind of, like, pan the camera around and let you take a look, but... My wife is in the other room watching this streaming on our 65-inch TV, and it looks great. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a little got a little message saying looks good. Anyways, sorry sidetrack, but yeah, uh, this would be kind of cool to see on a uh, whoa. Whoops, looks like I messed up. <laughs> I got to restart. So let's talk a little about the approval process for getting on all these platforms. Apple has its own pretty notorious one. Android, obviously, less so. By releasing on all of these platforms at once, did that make it easier or harder? Um, I think probably a little easier, just because I, you know, once I figured it out, the problems I was having on one, I can carry that over to the next. And I didn't do it all simultaneously. I started with Android and I got it all cleaned up, and then I ported over to the Kindle, which is piece of cake basically and then then i attacked apple and that's that took a couple of weeks because there were some things that i had to change um but so it's not like i did everything all in the same week so i had several weeks to, to do all of this and, uh, i was gonna and, say are you telling me that it was a piece of cake getting all those developer packages working for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, we got apks jpks uh or, or jdks and Oh gosh, so many other DKs, it's like, yeah. Yeah, well once you get them all squared away, as long as nobody messes with your computer, you know, your, your goal, but <laughs> you know, that's, uh, there, are some, there are some pain points there, you know, especially on the Apple side. Let's dig into that a little bit more. What are the Apple points? The iOS uh, points, I should say. Well, first of all, you have to have a Mac. That's uh, <laughs> that's a problem for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, um, I actually don't mind that so much because I like working on a Mac. But you know, that, you know, that's a big deal. You can't if you have a workflow that doesn't involve a Mac. It's really kind of disruptive. Uh, so, and the the back 
Apple is not very uh, transparent about a lot of their things, so it seems like it takes several days to get something up to Apple, have them look at it, and you, then you, they come back and say this needs to be fixed, and you fix it. And the, you know, the turnaround time is a little slow, but all in all, this this is a much better experience than the last time I did. They seem to be they seem to have a bigger staff or something because they're really pushing things through in a day or two, and you know that's that's a lot better than it was a year ago. Hmm. Oh, I love that comparison between them. That's good feedback because uh, certainly Apple's taken a lot of heat for being developer unfriendly uh, in okay. the past. That's definitely good to hear. Yeah, they're working on it. <laughs> so when you start, if you have to ever push out patches to any of these, uh, is it all handled within the stores themselves? Can you do it with one build, or are you going to be having to do different things for different platforms? Well, this is a, a Unity game. Yeah, it is a good question. So it's a Unity game, and uh, basically I have this command line build system that I kind of cobbled together myself. So all I need to do is uh, run the build command line, and it pops out this, uh, you know, for, for Google, it's really easy. I, I get an APK. You know, and for Steam, it's really easy because I get executables I can push up. The Steam works. But for Apple, the pain point is I have to open up Xcode and do the build manually. I mean, I, I understand that if I would spend the time, I could probably figure out how to automate Xcode. But, you know, it's it's not there yet. And I don't think I'm going to have to do it that many times to warrant the extra effort of automating Xcode. But I really wish there was an easier way to do you know, command line builds on Apple. Okay. Have you get, gotten reviews yet in any of the stores? Uh, only on Steam, I think. Uh, Nothing is not, no reviews yet, even on Apple or Android. A Player, Apple, uh, holds, Apple will hold them back until you get a magic number. And I'm not sure what that number is, but what they want to do is they don't want to skew the in initial reviews by either too positive or too negative. So they wait until a, you know, a fixed number of reviews have been added before they'll show the score. And I think they hold back the review, the written reviews as well. So maybe by tomorrow or the next day. And I think I understand the Apple cycle goes from Thursday to Thursday. So if you're looking to get featured, and I am, so please review the app and you know play the game and all that. Um, but so I've got basically tomorrow to kind of push the game again and try to get Apple's attention for their Thursday to Thursday feature cycle. Very good to know. So let's talk about getting the word out about these games. You tend to think of uh, Android and Apple users being different and going to different news sites and the like. How did you get the news out about it? Well, basically I did what I did with Steam and that was I, I kind of combed the internet and decided who the influencers were for the particular platform. You know, originally it was Steam and this time it was mobile. <laughs> And uh, so I looked at other similar games and who covered them, and I kind of built up a spreadsheet and emailed those influencers to, to try to get some coverage, try to get some streaming, that kind of thing. And, and you know, Apple actually has a new URL that wasn't there last year that allows you to promote your game directly to the Apple staff. They don't give you any feedback, they don't promise anything, and they say it takes about six weeks, but I did that a month ago. So, you know, maybe something will come of that. Very nice. You can make more money selling that list of influencers than you can on today's <laughs> fire sale. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> the other thing I did is so I sell well on this level, so <laughs> I've had to restart a few times. I are not puzzling. Yeah. Well. I are sinking. Yeah, that's the great highway level. Basically, you need to uh, get them all lined up so you can pull all three down at once to the right side. But, so yeah. you're so you're doing the same price point for each of these, right? You're just ninety nine cents on all of them, right? Yeah, and I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Um, and, and the reason I'm saying that is I think Steam is changing their policies on dollar games. Um, there used to be this thing on Steam where you can drop coupons, you know, for discounts, and that was a way for getting attention. Um, there used to be this thing called uh, trading cards, but now those don't happen automatically. And I'm thinking, this hasn't been officially announced, but I think 
that the price point is a problem. And I think if you have a game that's when it's on sale that goes under a dollar, they're not really happy with that. So um, I, I think in the future, there are going to be fewer dollar games on Steam. This is a prediction. You heard it here first. Um, <laughs> but uh, my next one probably won't be a dollar because I'm missing out on some features that uh, the customers of these types of apps really like. And that is, you know, uh, trading cards. And I think the only way to get that back in the game is to charge, you know, have a higher price point for the game. That's good to know. And apparently it made Brian give us all the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Not because he finally finished the level that it held him back. No, no, it wouldn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> I guess I don't um, walk and chew gum, or actually stream, solve puzzles and chew gum at the same time all that well. <laughs> Looks like you're doing pretty well to me. Now, um, you've also uh, put this up on Congregate, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I did, and, and Newgrounds this week as well. Um, mostly to get uh, some come eyeballs on the product. There's not any revenue that's coming directly from those platforms, although they do have a really minimal ad base thing. But from what I understand, that's kind of minimal. But I've gotten a lot of eyeballs on it. Probably about 30,000 30, folks have played it on Congregate. Um, probably by the, by the end of the next week, about 50,000 will have played it. Excellent. Now, they've got a lot of basic APIs for helping you do everything from scoreboards to leaderboards, et cetera. How much of that did you implement into a thinker? What I did is I did the, uh, the leaderboard thing, Bas basically send up a couple stats and let people know when they finish the level and, uh, and another statistic that tells them when they finish the game so that the congregate people can add a badge. Um, Hopefully they'll add a badge, but those those badges and achievements are invite only. Um, so basically, all I can do is provide some statistics. And since the game already had statistics, hooking into the Congregate API was pretty easy. Excellent, excellent. Uh, have you found much crossover from Steam to Congregate and Newgrounds? You know, I was expecting Andrew that there would be a lot of crossover. But apparently there is not a lot. So I think once you've picked a, a, a platform of choice where all your friends play games like Congregate or Steam or Newgrounds or wherever, that you pretty much stick to that. There's going to be a little crossover, but not as much as I would have expected. That's interesting because, of course, I'm a junkie for all of them, but maybe I game too much. Oh, we, may, we may be edge cases. <laughs> <laughs> the outliers in this case. Yeah. So, uh, I actually, some people like complain about the trolls in Newgrounds and uh, Congregate, but I found the, the communities there to be very good, very supportive, and very informed. What are you finding? Yeah, I'm kind of finding the same thing. There's, good, there's you know, always the outlier, um, but they seem to be shut down pretty uh -oh. uh, There you go. They're letting, uh, you know, you can rate down comments, and so people that are being trollish, they just get rated down, and so they disappear. And so that seems to kind of moderate itself. Very good. Yeah, I always enjoy being in there because you can find intelligent people worth, uh, worth talking to fairly easily. Um, yeah, I think uh, Congregate especially seems to be really good for putting out, out prototypes and getting early feedback. And I didn't do that on this game, but I think I will on the next one because it seems to be... You know, they seem to be really receptive for trying new games and letting you know what they think about it. Well, let's dig into that. Other than prototyping on Congregate, what are the lessons you've learned from this launch and from the other Sinker launches that you'll incorporate on your next AAA title? Yeah, AAA, right? <laughs> I think he's got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I better stop watching Brian play. Um, <laughs> the... Uh, Brian stopped like? watching Brian play. You should too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think I learned. I took a lot of my lumps on the game before this one. 
So I'm pretty happy with the process that I had in place for Sinker, you know, basically keeping the scope really simple, showing the game a lot more than I showed the last one, you know, showing it at local conventions, taking it to meetups, that kind of thing. So I'm pretty happy with the process I've come up with, you know, for this game. And uh, so I'm not sure I'm going to happily answer your question with any big revelation. I don't know, I'm just going to march ahead with the next game. I'm really sorry that Joe hung up his phone in disgust. I wanted to hear if the meetup group had been uh, any good for you. Yeah, I, and I just turned him up, too. Wait, I think Joe is still streaming this. So was the meetup group a complete waste of time, mainly because of that Joe guy? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to answer that. Joe's been a good friend to me, and he's really instrumental in uh, giving me feedback. Feedback is so important. You know, honest feedback is hard to come by. And I appreciate that about Joe. He's straightforward. He'll tell you what he's thinking about. It. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think you've gotten good feedback at the meetup group in general from the times I've been there. Yeah, I, th that meetup group and there's some other meetup groups I go to, the Unity group, meetup group, that's here regularly, pretty helpful. And, and of course, you know, going to, going to Siege, going to DreamHack, those kinds of things. There we go. Excellent, excellent. So what do you think of this as a convention game? I mean, it is a relatively simple puzzle game to take conventions, but you're talking specifically about going out to events and showing it off, I'm guessing, beyond Siege, which is a must-do for any game developer. Uh, you're also thinking of, of uh, Dragon Con and Momocon and so on, so forth. Um, what do you think yeah. about taking it to those places? How do you do it effectively? Well, this kind of game is actually a lot easier than, say, an RPG or you you could just you can just <laughs> you can just sit down and immediately grab what's going on um, with a game like this, and so it's kind of a good fit for going to a convention with. Um, so yeah, uh, and you get a lot of feedback just by watching people play, not even asking questions, just Hopefully watch. Hopefully, you're not watching do. that. <laughs> <laughs> Real yeah. baffled. Yeah. Yeah. Did I tell the story already about the squares? There was this TV show called Square Pegs, and you know, Square Pegs, Round Hole, that kind of thing. Right. But I, I get a lot of questions about the squares, and people think that I've made a mistake that the, uh, the, the circles will actually go into the square holes happily. What? <laughs> Shouldn't have told Brian that. Now he'll no, stop no, somebody. No, no, no. I noticed that, and I remember that. I'm still just kind of baffled by this one particular level. <laughs> yeah. All right, so go to the convention if our already see it, uh, feel free to tell me in chat here, or if you have any questions for Robert, be sure to say something in chat. We'll relay those questions on. Uh, let's see. I got Actually, we got a coat. Uh, Kushimo. Oh, man. I hated this one so hard. So I'm assuming Kushimo's already made it through this level. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and of course, I'm in Mixer, I've got GGDA going, go left, no, go right. Sounds like a NASCAR guy. No, they only go left, right? Sorry. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> we, have, we have questions in there. Uh, what is this one called? I don't know if they mean the level or the uh, game. Do the levels have names? They, uh, no, they don't have names. He's called no. one the highway level. <laughs> the, uh, the, you know, the game has no text in it anywhere, even in the menu, so in the options. So I really wanted to make sure that it was globalized or localized, you know, easily. So I, I it purposely left out text, but internally I had names for a lot of them. Uh, you know, that I, that I, cause sometimes, you know, I worked on them for a day or, more just trying to t tune them up and things like that so like, some of our old friends sorry uh brian other people in uh in youtube chat are also criticizing your driving <laughs> you know what they can stop criticizing me now because i finally got it Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, oh wow on. he did it yes that's right so you've got this active background, uh, Robert, and things are happening and you quickly realize that it doesn't have an impact on play. 
when you play tested this on the TV, though, is it more obvious? Is it something that people wonder if that does something in the game? No, I haven't actually had anybody ask me about it. Some people mentioned that they get motion sick background. So if you do go to the options menu, you can turn off the background effects because you know, some people are just really motion sensitive and things in the background that aren't actually part of the game can be turned off safely and you can still enjoy the game. So that's definitely, that's an option. Um, but yeah, the, the background, the motion in the background basically is for aesthetics, you know, to give you something to kind of ponder on. So how many levels do you have total? Oh, boo. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah, we got a question in Discord chat saying how many levels total. So I'm pretending it's my question. Okay. <laughs> uh, so there are 60 levels, um, and they, as you can see, that you start slowing down. The first, you know, first half of the game, you can go through pretty quickly in the second half. Some of them, if they're teaching levels, you can go through but there's a couple more mechanics that haven't been introduced here yet and they'll, they'll, they'll definitely slow you down but 60 total all right come on and it's only gotta give me other questions for him <laughs> <laughs> so doing a trailer for a game like this must be a little trickier but trailers are still critical what did you incorporate for your trailer um, your trailers yeah, trailers are tricky, and you know, since I did everything myself, project that's probably one of those things that I probably should have outsourced, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> basically, I, I have a scripting engine that, that capture you know the the frames for me, and you know I package it up later. So, what my thought was that if I didn't like the way that trailer came out, then I could just easily re-record it using the, the in-game engine scripting, but. I was happy with one of my first cuts, and it kind of got the, the, you know, the idea of the game across, and I didn't have to spend a lot of money. That was good. So, uh, a comment on YouTube, Ben Berg, just got here, lovely, relaxing game. I gotta agree. Um, I mean, it's, yeah. The music, the sound effects, the calmness of the background, uh, slightly moving around, as Andrew was just pointing out, but, um, yeah, I, I do, I do enjoy, uh, relaxing puzzle games uh it's not as relaxing trying to talk and stream at the same time that's why we have andrew taking over he's been <laughs> i don't know brian <laughs> brian it might be your playing that's so relaxing because you're certainly not trying to solve them quickly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so in uh, coming up with the puzzles uh for this game obviously a lot of it is based on the mechanics you have any other sources of inspiration? You mainly rip off puzzles by Joe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Completely no. different types of puzzles for everybody watching. Yeah, right. Um, I've actually played several games in this, what I call this minimal puzzle genre. Um, and, you know, some of the standout examples that were insp inspirations for me were um, Hook and Clocky. Um, I don't know if you guys have actually played those, but, uh, you know, they were really, you know, get games in a similar vein at a similar price point. Um, things like Hex Cells, and there's another game that I really enjoy called Line, L-Y-N-E. Um, and, you know, if you go up and check out this game on Steam or any other uh, game like it, at the bottom of the Steam page, you'll see, show me more games like this. They'll usually show you three games. And you can spend all day clicking on those games and find three other games that are just <laughs> in a similar vein. So, you know, there's a whole raft of games out there that take inspiration. Hey, Robert, difficulty levels. Is there a way to add a difficulty level to Brian's? He's getting a bit too uh, sure of himself. <laughs> <laughs> he might not like this one. I don't know. No, no. You know, it's kind of fun, though. I do have a developer on here. If I spend too long, you know. <laughs> what you think he's going to give you a hint ah! <laughs> what, we make up these games just codes? to laugh at people <laughs> you know it's, you know, it's yeah, funny you say that some of them actually are, are head scratchers even for me and 
you know, I, I actually, I'll admit it. I went back to my test suite to figure out the solution to one of the late, the ending game puzzles. So I have this this test suite that'll play all the le levels for me, just to make sure that before I send out a release that everything still works. And and I've been known to cheat and go look at that, figure out what happened there, because you know some of them are head scratchers. <laughs> uh -huh. This is a good head scratcher, no doubt. So how do you do cheat codes on the uh, TV controllers? Up, down, left, left, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> you use a keyboard. There you go. Mm -hmm. So one thing I love about Congregate are the tags. I actually think Congregate has one of those complete lists of tags for games. So you can uh, appropriately give it all the different designations you think is right. So Sinker is classified as puzzle, relaxing, minimalism. Which yeah. I find I always find the idea of puzzles and relaxing to be a little contradictory, but that's just me who has to beat them or else. Um, <laughs> what do you think? Any other tags you should have used? Why aren't you tagged as a tag game? Uh, you know, those are similar to the tags that are up on Steam. Steam uses tags as well. Um, I think that if you're looking for a game to play, you know, right now it's easy on Congress page and you can see sinker but in a, in a month it won't be on the front page anymore so those tags are really important if you want to play a puzzle game you can use the puzzle tag and find all kinds of games and i want to make sure that people find the minimalist too because you know there's there's definitely attributes of a minimalist game that that, uh, that non-minimalist puzzle games you know don't have so those tags are really important yeah and it's interesting because we have puzzle game listed as a cat. It'd be nice to have more of the different types of puzzle games broken in. Are you oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> I can't solve this one now. Oh my god. <laughs> We're still I... in the early levels, aren't we? <laughs> what is this? Two or three? <laughs> but, well, the, for any other viewers, if you're ever curious about how far you ever got, you can click on this neat little feature. There you go. 27 puzzles in Ooh, 37 minutes. Ah, and you did start at one. I did. That's impressive. Good Thank use of the you. cheat codes. <laughs> Maybe he gave yeah. you cheat codes and you just can't see them. Uh, it, Valerie it, is asking, is this on Google Play? What do you want to tell her? Absolutely. It was actually the first mobile put up there. So um, it's definitely on Google Play. And you could, if you buy it on Google Play, you'll get it for Android TVs as well. And Valerie, just uh, so you know, um, I am using a Samsung Galaxy S5 uh, right now playing this game. Uh, just kind of bouncing it to the stream. And so, yeah, me rotating the phone, you can kind of see what you get when you get uh, uh, portrait and landscape kind of views. And, of course, I'm doing landscape view because if I do this, then I would have to do something like this. And you don't want that. You really don't want that. You know, just shows my big head. We don't want to show my big head that much. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> you know, it's that that rotation is really interesting. You know, I, I I worked in the game for six months in landscape mode, and then did the portrait thing for mobile. And I can't solve the portrait ones. There is <laughs> because it's a new game to me. It's really, it's really weird. I have to really think hard about the game when it's in portrait because I've just been so used to seeing it. Landscape. It's the same puzzle, though, right? Absolutely the same puzzle. Right, okay. But it looks That's... different. That is interesting. So for anybody looking to release their game on multiple platforms in a single day, <laughs> what recommendations do you have for them other than don't? <laughs> yeah, don't's a pretty big one. You know, there's a lot of reasons for staggering the release, and... I think they pretty much all apply to a bigger shop than I am. Um, so I thought, you know, the, for me, I thought, well, uh, uh, I'll hit all the platforms at once and try to get the biggest splash possible. And so my advice for how to do that is just kind of make sure you're ready for each one before you move on to the next one. And basically you just hold back those platforms until you got all of them ready to go. Then you I can push up again. I screwed up again. I screwed up again. I bet you I screwed up again. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. Yay! Okay, cool. 
You still have time to screw it up, Brian. Right. Don't undersell yourself. <laughs> hey, achievement unlocked. Woohoo! Level four, ten thousand XP. So, okay, uh, the Google cheat or the Google achievement may show you that I have, in fact, already solved some of these before. Not this one. <laughs> but I did. I did reinstall the game, so that's why you got to see it start from one. Although you know you could have started at any level you wanted to, but no. I have not been here yet. Bravo! Well, I have to admit, I'm not used to achievements in puzzle games. What achievements do you have in here? Basically, they're progress achievements, right? So. Every time you finish a mechanic, a new mechanic section, I'll throw up an achievement kind of mark of progress. It's also an interesting way to see where people uh, stop in a game. You can go up and look at the, the achievement leaderboards and see how far people got in the game. So where are people stopping? Uh, before here. If, if, <laughs> you're gonna, if you get to here, you're going to finish. Pretty much what I'm seeing. Oh, hey, you know what? I just realized this video is a spoiler alert. I should have probably should have said that in the very beginning. <laughs> Brian, nobody can figure out what you're doing. That's true. Uh, <laughs> I, all right, so if anybody's watching, like what I've been doing right here, um, playing with the arrow, I was just curious, um, you know, in solving while well, solving this, is if I brought this to here, noticed it kind of jerked back and forth. I was wondering if it would have shot out past my little hook but apparently not so that's... yeah I call, I call those things kickers so yeah that, the hook stops the kicker interesting a hook and a uh, kicker really <laughs> didn't I just learn that myself a second ago <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any analytics for the game uh, oh Facebook example uh, Facebook analytics and ben, oh. ben also said, hey, you're almost halfway there. <laughs> My glass is half empty, according to Ben Bird. There you go. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so analytics. What have you uh, picked up? What do you, what do you find most important other than where people stop? I think that's, that's all I'm really concerned about. I guess what you call it is a funnel. I want to see what the pain points are if people are really getting frustrated with a certain puzzle you want to know that and fix that at this point there doesn't do any good the game's done and i'm not going to change anything at, at this point but Does you know really, no I, I i won't what the biggest ask that people have been uh, you know kind of asking for is that they want a backup button they want they want to back up one move oh. um, if they've gone too far with the hook so in the if i do a follow-up game i probably will add something like that because you know you know that's not such a big deal um but i, I thought that the levels were short enough that most people wouldn't be too frustrated by having to restart but i've gotten an earful of people that didn't think that way so uh well uh, how many people did you have working on that? Did you ever have any uh, subcontractors with this game, or did you do everything yourself? No, this is all a solo. Okay. Well, uh, like, that just kind of brought up a thought. Like, in my past uh, game jams, for example, uh, I was a level uh, editor at one particular one, and um, I kept trying to make the levels a little bit easier, a little bit easier, whereas the programmers and the other guys on my team were like, no, these are too easy. And uh, I was like, well, you kind of want to make it a little easy for your players, especially trying to get to learn to play the game. Now, ours was a side-scroller, and, you know, you only had one life kind of thing. So if you died, you started over from the beginning. But, uh, you know, that's just a, an interesting thought. You know, how do you make sure that your players keep playing your game even as it gets too hard? Yeah, it's a really fine line. You don't make it hard enough, people that are into puzzles, they won't enjoy it. Um, and people won't get any kind of satisfaction when they solve the puzzle um, if it's all too easy. So you have to kind of walk a fine line. And that, what that means is not everybody's going to like your game. Um, that's OK. That's kind of what it's supposed to work. Did you do any kind of special studies on your progression curve for folks listening? That generally means as a player is playing the game, the game is supposed to get more difficult in accordance and basically along the same curve pattern as the player's skills increase. 
If it's ever too hard for the player's skills, they'll get frustrated and stop. If it's ever too easy for the player's skills, they'll get bored and stop. So you try and keep those essentially in sync. Did you actually study that, or has this pretty much been uh, the art of game design? It feels just right. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit to kind of being a seat of the pants kind of uh, game designer in this in that case. You know, having played you know tons of these types of games, and what I enjoy about the games and the level progression is what I incorporated into the game. You know, having just played a lot of these kinds of games. Valerie had said, I don't recall the arrow when played when she played this, so she probably uh, didn't get that high of a level. Yeah, that's, that's one of the... Interesting, this is an interesting level, if it goes how I think it's going to go. I kind of like this. If you do it right, you'll get an achievement if you haven't already. The, um, uh, there's a way to miss it, but <laughs> you'll probably get it. That's one... <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Cool. Um, that's one thing that, that Valerie mentioned that you know, she didn't get a chance to play the later levels because they weren't created yet when I showed this at Siege and some of these other places. You know, they were, the game was not quite finished yet. Um, and when you sit people down at a convention um, and ask them to play your game, they don't have two hours or three hours to play the whole game, but they do have enough time to learn the first part of the game. So most people only play the first half. I got more feedback on the first half than the second half. Gotcha, gotcha. About how long does it take you to design one of these levels at 30 and above? Um, some of them go pretty quickly because teaching them me, you know, hours to do. What I usually do is just have a pad of paper and I'll sketch them out and, and I'll show them to my wife and Louise and she's been really helpful about that. Yeah, that's not going to work. I hate that. Are we, are we, <laughs> so we're pad and paper game design documents? Yeah, yeah, I definitely <laughs> use, I use a lot of paper. Um, and because it's a pain to, to design these things on a computer, it's not going to work. So you want to make sure it looks good on paper first before you Absolutely. Can I quote you on that? In fact, I <laughs> will. Yeah. Say and that before one more anyone time for all of our starry-eyed game developers. <laughs> yeah, you need to plan a bit before you actually do um, Otherwise, you're going to spin your wheels too long. So, yeah, definitely you know, plan things out on paper before you uh, actually commit to coding and getting inside Unity Editor and moving things. And before anybody complains about Robert talking about his wife being a hater on his level, <laughs> wife's job is to give honest feedback. <laughs> That's why mine's always told me mine are wonderful. Right. So, uh, speaking of haters, uh, on YouTube, Robert, there are a bunch of videos of your game. Some of them have had pretty good views. I mean, uh, there's some like up around 8,000 and the like. Uh, first of all, do you ever go and look at the videos of folks playing your game? And secondly, are you trying to recruit folks to do more Let's Plays of uh, Sinker? I'm not doing that right now, but in the... In the I actively recruited people. I had a spreadsheet with about 500 streamers on that I would contact to try and get them to show the game. And that paid off, I think. Um, I do watch some of them. I don't watch all of them. Um, some of them are just a hoot to watch. Um, and some of them are gonna, they, they, if they don't like the game, that's kind of depressing. So I won't watch the whole thing. You know, you, as a as a creator, you just can't read all the reviews you know, because some of them aren't really happy with your creation. And so that can kind of be damaging to your psyche. But, you know, it's it's nice to, you gotta, you gotta read some of them. You gotta check out what people think of your product or you can't ever improve it. Okay, yeah, my brain just exploded on this one. You got any uh, really good criticisms you want to share? As in good, as in especially nasty, or actually helpful? Um, that's a good question. Um, I haven't really thought about it. Uh, the, the game is a product of criticism and feedback I've gotten from the, you know, there's no doubt about it. This would have been a completely different product if I did it in a, in a, in a room by myself and never showed it to anybody until I was done. It just wouldn't have worked. So, you know, my biggest uh, takeaway on that is make sure you get a lot of feedback and get early, fail early, if that's the way you want to think about it. You know, uh, it's really important. That's really good uh, feedback. That, uh, that the role the community has played in this, in keeping it alive and keeping you doing uh, 
doing good work. Is there a thinker fan base now? Like uh, Joe is very glad to have his puzzles by Joe fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> all I can say is uh, buy the gamer. Please let me know what you think about it. It's really important. There you go. And that is another good point. You know, those, those reviews at the very beginning are so important. So, yeah, um, it just goes to show if uh, you get yourself a copy, you like the game, definitely let the developers know that you do. Um, and where are we here? We're about 10 minutes left. Um, you going to tell me how to get through this one? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I, is that a spoiler? I don't know. You know? <laughs> what do I folks know, want right? me to I, I well, can tell see. you how to finish them. Let's see here. So you said you had Brian. Let me give. I'll give you a hint, Brian. Get the uh, get the uh, circles in the holes. Oh, okay. Sounds like another <laughs> game. Hey, hey. <laughs> get the circle. Uh, what golf? There you go. Yeah. Anyways, all right. Well, let's see. Uh, any other? By the way, yeah, we've got about ten minutes left. Any questions from the chat? Bring it on in, and um, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get a cheat code for this one. This is a this is a doozy. That's the uh, you know if those if you go back to the, the menus there you can see each level has the, the final um, the final level of each of those groups is usually like what I call the boss level and so this is the boss kicker level which is a little more difficult than the other one. Um, ah, interesting. Yeah, so once you get through this one, you'll get a new. And it'll be easier and it'll kind of ramp you up until you get to the boss that level. Is, that is for... very, very good. I, I mean, I'm, I'm so glad you, you know, bring that up, especially with puzzle games. You know, they do get too tough. Your player can't get past that last one. So, yeah, you know, but when they do actually figure it out, um, you know, they get a little reprieve. They get to clear a few more levels. <laughs> yeah. So I think on my next game, that's a puzzle game I'm similar to what. Uh, uh, Kartik has done with his containment game, which is a fantastic strategy game. I don't know if you guys have played that, but his level select menu it, it has uh, this kind of dichotomy where you can change a branch. So if you get stuck on one, you can change the branch to go to another, and you can still finish the game even if you have to leave a few levels behind. So I want to kind of incorporate that idea where you don't have to go linearly through the whole game. Um, in, in, in my next product, and so uh, you, know, you, know, you kind of learn from your fellow developers, you know what works and what. And I think, yeah, I, having multiple ways to get to the end of the game might be even for a minimalist puzzle game. Yeah, Joe is certainly proud about letting players play his game any way they want, pick any of the puzzles, any of the difficulty settings, etc., and uh, and go for it. Is there a community of puzzle designers that supports each other? More uh, importantly, is there a community of puzzle, <laughs> if you, if puzzle got, minimalist, relaxing developers? If you guys know of any, uh, I'll join, you know, right away. Um, I know most of the folks that do this on Steam through either Steam or through Twitter. Um, and we, we chat on, you know, social media. I actually don't know any of them in person. But they're they're all nice bunch of folks and very helpful and you know they'll play your game early and give you feedback and help you promote it and it's pretty nice. Sounds like a convention waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna have to hop over to the other computer. I, I see we got a handful of viewers on Mixer. Uh, if you're on Mixer, say hi. Say something. And if you're on Twitch, be sure to say something. We might have a surprise for you. Uh, and let's see here. We might we might have a surprise. Yeah, we got we got a surprise for you. Let's I see. love surprises. Yes. And then Ben Berg, if you're still there, say something. Uh, all right. And in the meantime, uh, I really appreciate you uh, showing us this again. Uh, it's a great great mobile game so far. Uh, this one, um, I, I don't want to try to solve it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, the surprise is that Brian would solve this level. Right, right. It's okay, no shame. It's the boss kicker. 
Well, I'll yeah. get past. Yep. Oh, well, that one looks like schematics for a broken computer. So. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, um, yeah. Uh, any other uh, future plans uh, or updates you're uh, willing to talk about? As far as Sinker, I think this game is done. I'm going to, of course, support it and you know, keep it um, going on all the platforms it's on now. But as far as adding content, I don't have any plans for adding content. To Sinker, but I've been talking to folks about whether they would like workshop support, like on Steam, where they can build their own levels. So that's a possibility. If I can get enough folks to tell me they're really interested in making levels for the game, because I don't know that I could do all of them myself um, in another product, but I would certainly like to give people the tools to make levels. So that's that's a possibility. Well, let's talk about that because that's something with Noble Armada is I'm doing the Kickstarter for a big part to fund having a player usable mission editor. Your game engine is essentially a level editor. I mean, yeah, you work in Unity which uh, to some degree is a glorified level editor, but for what you're doing, all it really needs to be is level editor. What yeah. would be involved in releasing something that the uh, general audience could use? Basically, the, you know, the, I just need a UI for being able to move things. Around. It shouldn't be you know, rocket science. It should be fairly straightforward. But, um, I'm really uh, adamant about supporting controllers so that I can keep this on TVs and, you know, console-like things. So that's, you know, the UI is not quite as straightforward, you know, when you were forced to use a controller instead of a mouse and keyboard. But, you know, that said, it's basically just a glorified UI for moving things around. But I don't want to, I don't want to have to, you know, recreate the game, so I want to keep it simple. But, you know, it's doable. Ah, we do have a question online. Anatole, uh, uh, do you have plans to add it to the Windows Store or for the phone, uh, et cetera? Actually, I don't. Um, I would like to be convinced by folks if that's a, a, something I should be doing. But actually, you know, so it just seems like there's some platforms that, you know, that may be more trouble than they're worth. But I may be wrong. I'm just not a Windows guy. So tell me, you know, is that a... A platform that works for people. Do you guys know? Um, I had an app up there for a little while. I didn't get a whole lot of traffic, but that was uh, four years ago. So <laughs> uh, I'm sure Windows is. I, so I'm not one who could really tell you. Um, yeah, Windows Store and Windows Phone, two different things now, and they have that whole Xbox thing now to sell on to the PCs. So ooh. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I'm actually uh, not really happy with store experience over the, over the years because of that Games for Windows Live thing that out and some of my games stopped working. So, you know, I think people are probably happier with the incumbents like Steam because they seem a little more stable. Um, and in fact, that maybe my games will still be able to be played in, a, in 10 years time. And I'm not, I don't know that about Windows. Maybe they've changed how they're working. I know they've had a big, you know, kind of change up since the last generation, but I, I just don't know enough about it. I'd certainly be curious about this um, going up in uh, the X on Xbox, doing an Xbox port and so on. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's certainly it's certainly doable, but the game scope isn't really big enough to convince uh, those big platform holders that this is a good idea. Um, I'm, I wonder though if if the game had a workshop support and you know you could build levels and there were lots and lots of user generated levels that maybe that might be a large enough scope that would attract because I think a game like uh, could work well on the Switch where you can still touch things you know if you want to but it works with the controller but the game like I said just doesn't have enough scope to be attracted to people like me you know? um, so I had to work on figuring out how that works. Gotcha. Cool. Well, Valerie and I are chatting away in mixers. Of course, she says she loves it. She's going to continue playing it. And uh, if you don't mind, um, she has an Android, so uh, is she a lucky winner? Flip a coin. Heads she wins, tails you lose. <laughs> it's up to you, Robert. 
Whoa, yeah, absolutely. All right, she's a winner. All right, cool. Valerie, I will message you. You privately. just lost 99 cents. She would have bought one. I'm sorry, 99 <laughs> cents minus. 30. It would have been, uh, it would have been uh, what, 29.3333, something like that. Yeah, but the, the important thing is the review. I would yeah. give away just bucket loads of keys if review, but that was that's not really very ethical. Um, but, you know, please do leave a review if you like the game. That there would be go. awesome. Valerie, I will send you that key. Uh, anybody else in chat, this is your chance. Um, YouTube kind of went quiet. It looks like Twitch, Twitch a little bit went a little bit quiet too. So it's nine o'clock now. Um, any other final thoughts or you know sendaways for our viewers at home? Was launch day easier than you expected? Yeah, it was. I was kind of a little nervous, expecting bad things to happen had some you know hiccups but nothing bad so you know i'm happy glad to hear cool all right guys well thank you very much all right well thank you congratulations robert, robert. Yeah, looking congratulations. forward to a million sales tomorrow exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too all right well as i guess that tunes us in for this evening let me get everything else prepared and uh good night everybody thanks for tuning in